Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. So I've had a lot of people ask me about the lids that I use, how I overwinter, insulation. So I'm looking cross-eyed with this bee on my veil. I don't know if you can see it in the lighting, but it's late in the evening. We we're going from about 70 odd degrees to about 20, mid-20s tonight. So that's just Tennessee weather for you right there. But this hive right here, we're going to be doing something a little different insulation-wise. And I've never done this before. A lot of people ask. I've, I've never used insulation until this year. I'm only trying it out on probably about 50, 60 highs, a couple different methods. Ian's a foamy type insulation, and then we're going to be using this, which is more of a Michael Palmer approach, but a little bit adapted for Tennessee, because obviously we don't need insulation for our bees to survive here. There's a a decent bit of variables, I think, with it. And I think, uh, you know, when you're further up north, obviously it makes more sense and very well could be necessary. I know in areas it is necessary, but it really just depends on your area. And so I can't really give you an answer. But that's one of the beauties of doing it for fun more than doing it for a business is if you have three, five hives, two hives, these boards only cost about a buck fifty each for the, the board I'm fixing to use. So it's not really that big of, a, of an expense. Where if I did that over several hundred hives, you know, I have to think about it a little more. Plus I'd have to get inner covers and all that stuff. So anyways, this hive right here, I'm gonna leave a link in the comments below. This was like the first video we had that did well for us. It was about swarming and how to stop it. And this hive has been phenomenal all year, produced a lot of honey. We made at least one good split off of them. And I know we pulled brood from them a couple other different times. And they're looking great going into winter. Let's uh, let's just check the bottom box a little bit, see how they're doing because, I mean, there's a little bit of bees up top, but I'm just wanting to show off, I think, a little bit. That's really what it comes down to. These bees are not in the playing mood today. It is cool out here, and I can't say that I really blame them. Yeah, got some bees down there, bees up here. All that kind of stuff. Out of the way. Uh, anyway, so now let's talk about the insulation, what we're trying to achieve here. I'm not the, the greatest expert when it comes to insulation, but it should be a, an, an interesting experience for us. So one thing that I want to have is an inner cover for this because the foam board, the bees will chew it to pieces. I also want a notch right here. So we got a little notch in our inner cover, just enough for a couple bees to be able to get through. And this is going to allow some of the moist hot air come on out. So we're going to place that down first. These bees will get out of the way. All right. And now there's a couple different ways you can do this, but you need to make sure the bees can't get through this hole right here. It'd be better if this was taped down or maybe you can feel some heat coming through there or stapled. But I'm not going to take the time to do that. Now here is our foam board. Just get it from a hardware store. Lowe's. I get it from my local hardware guys. This has an R value or rating of 5, which isn't the highest in the world. If you're in a cold region, Michael Palmer usually does a 2 inch uh, foam material like this, foam board, and his R value, I mean, it might be a, a, a thicker, I don't know, more dense type, so I don't know what his is, but he uses a 2 inch. If you're really far up north, watching some Michael Palmer videos would be a very good idea. He has very good videos, not only just on northern beekeeping, but just fundamental beekeeping in general. So we've got that right here. Now one thing that we've got to do, of course, is have an outer cover, but we want to make sure that it's this back is pushed all the way forward, and that gives us about a quarter inch gap at the front of the hive. That allows that notch in the inner cover to be exposed to where that moist, hot air can get out. Now that kind of doesn't make sense because why do you want to lose all that heat? Well, that's kind of a balancing act there. Now, one other thing you'll have to watch out for is I had to do this a little bit ago, is I had to scrape all of the bee glue and the propolis that they had made and adjusted for the original migratory cover that we had, and I had to scrape it all the way back down to the wood because it was not, uh, the inner cover was not sitting flat at all, and so there's several gaps underneath there, and it was I was going to lose some heat. Again, I'm not really worried about bees winter killing here in Tennessee. Bees don't winter kill in Tennessee. Uh, if you have healthy bees and they have enough food and they're not being chewed on by mites and stuff, they're going to overwinter just fine. Cold weather does not kill bees in this state. Now, here's kind of how the insulation works. This is kind of in rough layman's terms. but So this hive has got a lot of bees in it. 
as the winter progresses, or starts rather, the bees are going to move more upwards. And that upper box has a lot of weight to it. I picked it up just a little bit ago. So they're going to be up there in that honey. Of course, they're going to be up here where the heat naturally rises. Since we have that board, that's going to help hold that heat in. One of the issues, though, is the bees, as they produce that heat, just like any creature, also produce water vapor. And hot air holds quite a bit of water vapor. I mean, just hot air can hold a lot more than cold air. And therein lies the problem. So if we just have a normal lid and it's cold, as that hot air contacts that cool lid, it's going to condense rapidly because it just can't hold that water anymore. And that's what happens with our windows and all that kind of different thing. So that insulative board we're putting on top of that inner cover is now going to give us a really nice R value up there. It's going to help keep that inner cover to where it's not, it's going to be hot, but it's not going to be really drastically cold. This is going to do a couple things. This is one going to help usher out some of that moist air out the front of that notch. That's not going to get all of it with that notch though. Some of that air is going to go to the side away from the cluster and that's the main thing. Beekeepers are concerned about it condensing on the lid or the inner cover and then raining back down on your bees cold moist well not cold moist air but cold droplets of water onto your bees. So this is basically what's happening. Envision a cluster. When this colony is clustered fully we're probably I'm expecting a cluster that's going to probably be something like that right there. And what's going to be happening is that heat is constantly going up. That's one thing you got to keep in mind. So it's constantly going up and it's going to be pushing the air that's cooling down off to the side. So that cool air or the air that's cooling is going to go away from that constant heat and it's going to push that moisture to the side walls where it can harmlessly drain down the walls of the beehive. There's no way you're going to completely keep your hive from getting a little moisture in it. And that's all right, especially here in Tennessee. I've pulled lids up and I've had a decent bit of moisture underneath the lids and my bees survived and did very good. So this is Tennessee though. It does not work in a lot of other places. So just keep that in mind. I just kind of wanted to illustrate for you kind of what we're envisioning here. I'm sure it's not a perfect example, but it does work. Whether uh, whether you're in Tennessee, whether you're anywhere, just, just think of it this way though. We're spending very little money for that insulative board. If it just saves our colony a little bit of feed or a little bit of honey, and these, these boards can last years if you take care of them. So I would think they're probably pretty efficient. We're going to be tinkering around with it. Who knows? We might even use them on all of our colonies next year or years down the road. But you know, for us, it could. You know, it's 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 a money thing. But if you got a couple hives, this isn't a bad idea. And even though we're in November, it's not too late to throw one of these on if you think that you need to. Um, just get in there, do it real quick. You're not going to hurt the bees. I've, I get in my beehives below freezing now. Don't do it below zero. You're a crazy person. I, I mean, hey, there might be some people that do that, though. Watch me get a comment now from someone who's in a really cold area like, I've done it before. So there's a lot of variables in beekeeping. And just because some hobbyist or even some veteran at your bee club says, you can't do this, does not always mean that's the case. We do a lot of things that some people say that are impossible to do. And that's what makes us feel really awesome some days. Uh, not really. Anyways. I'm going to stop being a goofball. It's cold. Laurel's looking at me like, shut up. Let's go inside where it's warm. Thanks. Don't look at me like, bloody <laughs> sandwiches again tonight. I'm making dinner. Hot dogs, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for watching the videos.